Hey, Kent Seville Baptist Church and whoever else may be tuning in right now. Let me say welcome and thank you for giving me a few moments of your time today. And I just want to encourage you. I want to encourage you in the Lord to remain steadfast and faithful in your faith and continue being the church. Though we cannot meet you know, corporately right now, we are still the church and we are called to be salt and light. So uh, be a light, be salt. All right, with that, uh, today we're going to be talking about a couple words that the Lord has placed on my heart, and those words are revival and awakening. And it's two words. I've been doing one word, but it's two because they're very similar. And you'll find out as we define these, of course, using our handy-dandy 1828 Webster's Dictionary. With that, I want to give you the definition. First, for revival. And it says, return, recall, or recovery to life from death or apparent death, as the revival of a drowned person. And then another definition says, renewed and more active attention to religion, an awakening of men to their spiritual concerns. Okay, now let's define awakening using our Webster's Dictionary. It says, a revival of religion or more general attention to religion than usual. Okay, great. Now let's, start, let's talk about it historically awakening and revival well first let's go all the way back to the the great awakening in the 1700s with jonathan edwards and what we saw take place then what we read about and then we have you know 100 years later the second great awake, awakening and then not too long after that we have some revivals that take place after the civil war then we have a revival that takes place after world war ii and during these time periods we have you know, powerful men uh, of the faith that, that come to be uh, known by uh, Billy Sunday, uh, Billy Graham, Bill Bright, D.L. Moody, Bill Clinton. Just kidding, not Bill Clinton. It was just a lot of Bill, so I uh, kind of slipped that in there. Not a political uh, rant here. Just kidding. Okay, erase that part. Anyway, let's move forward. And then we have the Jesus movement that took place in the 90s, I think, and then uh, the uh, Promise Keepers movement is a revivals and spiritual awakenings that we've just just a few of them that we can look back on and my question is this typically when we see these happen and occur in history what was the situation that brought the people to come to the spiritual awakening or revival well some things were in common such as there was a spiritual darkness there was a decline in morals and, and values. They were, they were in times of, or states of uh, uncertainties and insecurities. And fill in the blank with whatever descriptions you want to add in there. And then what it did is it led the people during that time to come to the conclusion that they were not in control. That there were things of this world that they could not handle alone which brought them to the conclusion using god's word that they needed god to take care of the situation that they were in personally individually and then corporately and then into the nations we need the lord right and but sometimes oftentimes it takes severe uh, situations and circumstances for us to come to a realization that we have drifted away from our first love, from the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's nothing new. Take the lives of the Israelites. We can look through scripture and we see times of, of great faith, and men of faith and women of faith and people of faith. And, and then the next generation slip away far, far from God. And then they realize that they had forgotten the father, the God of their fathers and the things that he had done. And, and so then they would cry out to the Lord and the Lord would send a deliverer or he would send a means to bring these people back to faith and trust and there'd be a great excitement and revival and awakening that took place. Yet, once again, the Israelites would drift away and allow idol worshiping and, and other pagan activities come into their lives and build a barrier between them and the Father. And now they would no longer be walking in light and fellowship with the Lord. Well, maybe... My question, my thoughts, what my convictions are here, and I'm sure you're getting to it. I understand where I'm, what I'm getting to is, are we at, on the brink 
of a great awakening. It's been a long time since we've had one in America. Is it time? Is the Lord using COVID-19 to rise, raise up the church to be who we have been called to be? All right, look with me in 2 Chronicles chapter 7. And as we read this passage, please, in context, this is a, a promise God is making to the Israelites. But remember that it's the same God today that made the promise to the Israelites then. And our God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And his promises are likewise. So look at Second Chronicles chapter 7, beginning in verse 11. It says, Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's palace, and successfully completed all that he had planned on doing in the house of the Lord and in his palace. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon at night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. If I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, and my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Ha! There we go. There's a promise. If we humble ourselves, remembering who God is, surrendering our lives to his lordship. If we pray, if we seek his face, he will hear our prayers and he will forgive our sins if we confess our sins. For you who have not yet placed your faith and your trust in Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he's listening today. And today, as Romans 10, 9 says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that he died for you, to take your sins to the grave, yet he was resurrected in life, and he is now offering you life eternal, and he will one day return to take you into glorification, then as Romans 10, 9 says, all you must do is pray, and he will hear you, and he will forgive your sins, and he will allow you to enter into his grace, into his family of faith. So that is my prayer for you. If you've already done that, and for the rest of you who are walking with the Lord today as a bride of Christ, as a body of believers, let me encourage you, let's start an awakening. Let's start an, a revival. The Lord has given us a perfect time and a perfect place right now to turn to Him, to drop on our knees, to seek His face, and ask Him to heal our lands. And today, as the church, in your homes, it's okay that we're not able to meet corporately. You know, we miss meeting together, but the Lord's church remains faithful and strong and bright as ever before. So what are you doing to take the gospel to the lost? Because let's, let's face it, uh, we can agree that Christianity is widespread and it's established, but are we being faithful as the called out ones, as ambassadors of Christ, are we being faithful as sent out ones and taking the gospel to the lost? Well, you have to answer those questions uh, yourself. But for me, my convictions are that we as a church need to rise up. We as a church, we need to drop to our knees and pray and ask the Lord to bring us boldness and strength as we witness to the glory of God and take the gospel to the lost. Tomorrow is the National Day of Prayer. It's an opportunity that we have to come together and pray for our country, pray for our leaders, pray for uh, our churches, pray for unity. But friends, we must always be praying for, to the means of meeting the lost where they are with the gospel so that they can understand the grace that comes with knowing the Lord Jesus as their Savior. So my challenge to you as we uh, end this until next week is tomorrow set aside specific special time for prayer and join in with the many, many, many Americans who will be uh, together for the National Day of Prayer. It'll be different this year. Typically, we're meeting corporately in different places all over our nation, and we can't. But God's not limited to a building or a palace or a place or a church building. No, he's with you wherever you are. So seek his face, pray for him to heal our lands, and until next time, uh, be strong and know that we miss you all at Kentsville Baptist Church.